Amen. And bless the Lord on today. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name for truly, amen. We have a lot to be thankful for. And we thank God, amen, for another opportunity, another privilege to come to you by way of teaching and preaching his holy word. And today, amen, we're going to be finishing up Samson, amen, going to be in the 16th chapter of Judges. And if you would, amen, please pray with me, amen, while we expound, amen, on these scriptures and this word that God will have us to receive. Even now, dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Even now, God, give us this day our daily bread, ears to hear, a mouth to speak, and a heart to receive. Even now, God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray, Father. Amen. Now, what we want to do, amen, is we want to look, amen, in Judges, the 16th chapter. And if you would, amen, we want to look, amen, at the fourth verse. And it reads as such, amen. It says, Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came to her and said to her, entice him and find out where his great strength lies. And by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And every one of us will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, listen to this. Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and I will be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now the men were laying in wait, staying with her in the room. And she said to and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now, please tell me what you may be bound with. So Samson said to her, if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak. Be like any other man. Therefore, Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And men were laying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arms like thread. And Delilah said to Samson, listen at this, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tightly with the batten of the loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he woke from his sleep and pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you? Listen to that. How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your strength lies. And it came to pass. Listen to this. Listen to this. When she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her all his heart. And he said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall be weak, be like any other man. Listen to this. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines, saying, come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lulled him to sleep on her lap. Oh, coming out. And called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and 
shake myself free, but he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Lord help me. Verse 22, we'll stop right here. It says, however, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Bless, bless the word. Amen. Um, here we look, amen, and we see, amen, the supposed demise or the fall of the man of God. And we look, amen, and we, we see, amen, um, when Samson, amen, was in his affair, you could say affair, with Delilah, we can, look, uh, we can look, amen, and we can see one thing. And what was that, amen? She wanted to know the source of his strength that she may bind him. Amen. And someone told me this one time, amen, you, you, you can't get out there, amen, and play footsie with the devil, amen. It's like playing with a poisonous snake, amen. Hmm. Uh, what's the story, amen? Um woman, amen, sees a snake. It's almost dead. <laughs> she takes the snake. She feeds it. Mm -hmm. Keeps it warm. Amen. Then we look and we see, amen, the snake gets healthy. And and, and once the um, snake, amen, recovers, amen, we look and we see the lady, she feeding the snake one day and it bites her. Poisonous snake. And she looks and she uh, looks at the snake and she's all hurt and she's disappointed and she can't understand why the snake bit her. Amen. After she fed it, after she loved it, after she has taken care of it, have brought it into her house, she can't understand why the snake would bite her. Amen. I believe and, and when one phrase of the story, amen, she asked the snake, why did you bite me? Amen. And the snake replies to her, amen, because I'm a snake. <laughs> I'm a poisonous snake. That, that's what I do. And I'm telling you this right here, amen. If you play with the snake, amen, it's only a matter of time before it bites you. What's it going to cost? Amen. Um, Jesus Christ put it this way, amen. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? And when you look at the spiritual gifts that God has given us, amen, what would a man give in exchange? Amen. I've, I've got to be careful. Amen. And as we follow the story of Samson, we've already said this. Amen. What was the bane of Samson? What was the bane of the man of God? Amen. Hmm? What he loved. Let's look at the call of Samson. Amen. Um, Numbers, uh, the sixth chapter. And we're just going to touch on these. We've already been over them. Amen. But, um, if you look with me, amen, in Numbers, the sixth chapter, amen. They got time here. Don't want to overlook anything, amen. But Numbers, the sixth chapter, amen. And what do we have here? When you look, amen, we have the, the uh, vow of the Nazarite, amen. Um, but in particular, amen, I want you to look with me in number six down at verse three. It says, he shall separate himself from wine and similar drink. He shall drink neither vinegar made from wine nor vinegar made from similar drink. Neither shall he drink any grape juice nor eat any fresh grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation, he shall eat nothing that is produced by the grapevine from sea to skin. You see that? Amen. Right there in Numbers, um, the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. You see that? Um, also, amen. I want you to uh, look with me, amen. As, as, as we look, amen, um, at this narrative, just going to go over a couple of, of, of things that's in the text. Um, of course, a lot of this, amen, you, you're going to have to look over yourself, spend time with the Lord, amen, um, in his word and fellowship with him. This is going to have to be your entertainment. This is going to have to be your nourishment. Amen. Spiritual food makes the spirit strong. When my spirit is strong, I'm able to wage a good warfare. Mm -hmm. When my spirit is weak, it's easy for the devil to overcome me and assail me. 
with little resistance. So in these last and evil days, we want to make so very careful that we're feeding on the word of God, that we might be strong in the spirit. Amen. But um, thank you for your patience. Amen. I want you to look with me. Amen. Um, uh, in, in Judges, amen, the 14th chapter. And I want you to go down with me, amen, um, to verse five. That's where we want to go. Listen, this right here says, so Samson went down to Timnah with his father and his mother. And this is right here. And it says, and he came to the vineyards of Timnah. You see that right there? Amen. And someone says, amen. And someone says, okay, oh, oh, okay, preacher, why did you go there? Amen. And we look, amen, and we see, amen, where Samson, amen, being a Nazarite, when we look at his vow, the Nazarite vow, amen, um, not to touch a dead body, amen. No razor was supposed to come upon his head, amen. And he was not supposed to drink um, um, strong drink, or he was not supposed to drink um, alcohol. Amen. And he was to stay away from that intoxication. But as you look and as you read, amen, the narrative of Samson, you will look and you will see certain occasions where Samson began to go places where he should not go. And we have um, insight into that when we look, amen, into verse five. And we see right here where Samson went down to Timnah with his father and his mother, and he came to the vineyards. Of Timna. See that? Amen. We have what well, to the vineyards of Timna. We talked about this, amen. Trespassing. Amen. What, what is it? Amen. Forgive us our trespasses. Oh God, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And what what is it? Amen. When, when I'm trespassing, amen. Down here in the country. Hmm? Samson County. Are you with me? Hmm? Eastern North Carolina. Property lines everywhere. And you cross that property line. The first thing someone going to say is you're trespassing. Get off my property. Because anytime I'm trespassing, I'm going in an area where I shouldn't, where, where, where I'm not supposed to be. Are you with me? And I told you this, amen. As a child of God, amen, we have to be careful where we go. We want to be so very careful not to trespass, amen, because when I trespass, amen, I subject myself, amen, to temptation. Hmm? Every man is going to be tempted anyway, but I have to be so very careful that I don't become my own afflictor. Are you with me? And the devil is tricky. And how do I do that? Amen. I've, I've got to be careful not to follow after what I see. Mm -hmm. I've got to be careful, amen, not to follow after that which I feel. God help me today. I've got to be careful not to follow after that which I smell. Mm -hmm. But what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the five senses and what I want to be led by, amen, is the Holy Spirit and my heart, amen, and God's word. Are you with me? Everything that looks good is not good. Everything that feels good is not good, but it's good. Amen. When God says that it's good and when God says that it's good. And here we see Samson, amen, going in the vineyards. Amen. On the way to Tenda. And when you look, amen, Samson, he hasn't sinned yet, but he's in a place that's conducive to unspiritual behavior. Are you with me? Hasn't sinned yet. And I have to be careful as a man of God. Someone says, walk the line, preacher. It's a thin line. It's a, it's a thin line. God, I mean, between love and hate. It's a thin line, amen, between righteousness and unrighteousness. It's a thin line sometimes between that which is spiritual and that which is not spiritual. This is how come I have to be so very careful that I'm sensitive to the voice of the Lord, because if not, I will miss it and I will end up in the vineyards of them. And even right now, amen, the church has to be careful, so very careful that it's not in the vineyards of Timnah. Now, go wrap this up, amen. Got a lot of material, amen. Um, a lot of this, amen, you're going to have to lay before the Lord yourself. Amen. Every man is going to have to work out his own soul salvation. And in these last and evil days, amen, everybody's trying to get what they can get. And of course, amen. But in all that you're getting, make sure that you're getting an understanding from the Lord. 
Mm-hmm. And this season, make sure, amen, that you're, pur- uh, that you're purchasing the food that perish not. Amen. And, and, and this season, eight, and this season, eight, and this season, eight, uh, amen, is, uh, we know that we're laboring, amen, but also, amen, you make sure that you're laboring, amen, for the wo- reward that does not pass away. Hmm. The gift of God that he's given. These are the things, amen, that we want to seek in these last and evil days. But, amen, we look, amen, and we see in verse five, where Samson went down to Timnah with his father and his mother, and they came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now, if you'll just skip right over with me, amen, if you'll go to Judges, the 16th chapter, amen. Listen where it says right here, it says, afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. See that? Right there, when you see the, boil, the valley of Sorek, Sorek. Um, interestingly, when we look at the word uh, Sorek, the Valley of Sorek, it actually Valley of Choice Grapevines. Ain't that something, Amen? Here, 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 here. And he, here we look, Amen, and we can say, Amen, that it was down in the Valley of Sorek where it says, Amen, in verse four, that Samson fell in love with the woman. Amen. See that at first, Amen. And, and this here is um, the the on the end. Are you with me, man? And as you follow uh, Samson's life, we'll see at first he was down in Timna trying to get married. Are you with me? In a place, amen, amongst people. Didn't believe what he believed. Are you with me? Didn't have the conviction that he had. Won't raised up the same way he was raised up. Samson had a call on his life from God. And we look and we see Samson intermingling trespassing and we look and we see a being here again in the valley of Sorek, the valley of choice grapevine samson is trespassing again and i told you this amen if you go out there amen in areas where you're not supposed to be as a woman of god as god's representative amen then it's only a matter of time amen before i am ensnared and in this season, amen, when you look at the people of God, a lot of us, amen, are in the valley of Sorek, amen, of choice vines, amen. And when you look at the Nazarite, let's um, look, amen, um, in First John, the second chapter. This is what verse 15 says. It says, do not love the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, listen right here the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God will abide <laughs> forever. Is that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Um, also, amen. I want you to see this right here, amen. Listen at James, the fourth chapter, third verse. It says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures or your lust that you may consume it. Look at what verse four says. It says, adulterers and adulteresses. Did you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever uh, uh, therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? I like this uh, uh, C press paraphrase. Paraphrase. This is this right here. It says, you are like an unfaithful wife who loves her husband enemies. You do not realize that making friends with God's enemies, the evil pleasures of this world, makes God your enemy. I say it again, that if you aim to enjoy the evil pleasures of this unsaved world, you cannot also be a friend of God. I believe it was God who said, no man can love two masters. Either he'll, uh, you know, uh, he'll hold to one. I like that one right there, amen. He'll despise the other. And here we have the story of Samson. Are you with me, amen? Trying to love two masters. Are you with me? And we look, amen, uh, 
and where he was at first trying to do it lawful. Now we see him spending the night at the motel, spending the night at the hotel. Amen. And then he went from uh, uh, spending the night at the hotel. Then, then he went from just cohabitating. Him, him, him and Delilah, they were cohabitating. And you look and you said, there goes the man of God living with a woman. Uh, amen, amen. Vice versa. Amen. There goes the woman of God living with whoever. Amen. This one says, I could do what I want. It does not affect my call. That's what Samson thought. This it says, amen, and no razor shall come upon his head. And when you look, amen, at Samson not drinking that alcohol, are you with me? Not, not, and then you look at him not touching the dead body. We look and see where Samson was supposed to, to, to stay. As a priest, he was supposed to stay clear of those things that were sinful. We see that in touching the dead body. Then we look, amen, at his intoxication. As a priest, there was a prescribed order that he was supposed to walk in in order to be effective. And we see Samson not <laughs> adjusting. Watch this right here, amen. Uh, in in man, there is a way that seemeth right. Amen. There, there is a way that seemeth right. But the Bible says that it ends in death. And sometimes, amen, the way that I want to serve God, that's one way. But the way that God tells me to serve him, that's the right way. And we look, amen, and we see where, amen, no razor was supposed to come upon his head. And we look, amen, and we say, amen, that my body's supposed to be consecrated. Not touching the dead body. Are you with me? Not drinking the wine. My body's supposed to be consecrated. But then we look, amen, at the head. And we look, amen, at the consecration of the heart. Are you with me? That's what the hair was, symbolic of the heart. So I'm supposed to serve God with my heart and my body. And we look and we see, amen, where the end result was of Samson. Are you with me? It says, amen, you can get out there and do whatever you want to do. Amen. Listen, um, and we're getting ready to close, but I want you to look right here, amen, and um, on the end. But if you look, amen, one more time with me, amen, in Judges, amen, you could look, amen, you could see in verse 20. And she said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. And they bound him with bronze fetters. And he became a grinder or a slave in the prison. And so when you look and you see where they had put out his eyes. Are you with me, amen? And then you look where they had put chains on him. And then you look, amen, and you see the physical manifestation of it was Samson's eyes, amen, that had made him a slave to his lust, to his passions. Are you with me? Therefore, blinding him to the call of God on his life. And you see this being manifested. Are you with me? We're going to stop right here. Amen. I want to tell you this right here, woman of God. Amen. I want to tell you uh, this right here, man of God, priest, holy priest unto the Lord. Are you with me? And in these last and evil days, we want to make so very careful, amen, that we're living our lives as lights unto the Lord. Amen. That we're about our father's business. And when we look at Samson, amen, and we look, amen, and Samson, amen, trying to serve the Lord, amen, in his own way. Amen. Hmm. I've got to serve God, amen, his way. Jesus Christ said, uh, what is that way? Jesus Christ said he was the way. He, he, he's the light. Watch this. The life and the truth. Forget what you heard. And even on the day, priest unto the Lord. Are you with me? God, he's calling us. Amen. To a life of consecration. A life of consecration. Amen. Which is the life given to the believer unto the Lord. Being God's special treasure. Being God's tool in the earth in these last and evil days. What do we want to do? Amen. Samson, like the sun, we want to look at Jesus. Are you with me? And we say, amen, when Jesus came. Are you with me? Amen. Someone says, Jesus, amen, the true Nazarite of God. Are you with me? His life dedicated to God, amen, from the day he was born, also to the day of his death, a sacrifice unto the Lord. We look and we see the life of Jesus, the priestly life of Jesus. Jesus, amen, the high priest of my confession. We look and we see where Jesus, amen, when they look 
to sin. When we look, amen, at the life that he lived, sin free. Are you with me? What Paul said, amen, he said, imitate me while I imitate Christ. Then we look, amen, uh, at the influence of Jesus Christ, where it says, amen, that he was uh, led by the spirit into the wilderness. And he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. When we look at the influence, we see Jesus, amen, being intoxicated with the Holy Spirit and not with wine hmm, or the influences of the world. But when it comes to his heart, we look, amen, and we see where Jesus, amen, pleased the Father in all things. And we look, amen, and we see where that was the life that was pleasing to the Lord, God approving it. Amen. God confirming it. And it's the life, amen, that God will have you to live and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Someone says, amen. I can't live in your kind of way and expect, amen, for God's anointing always to reside. And we don't want the church, amen, and we definitely do not want to become ineffective for the Lord. And we look and we see, amen, that even though Samson, amen, he fell, we look and we see where his hair began to grow back. Still God's Nazarite. And even though today, believer, you're still God's Nazarite. You're still God's Levite. You're still his priest. In these last and evil days, God has called you to shine for him. Are you with me? My call, what I'm here to do, my purpose, amen. The purpose, amen, of, of the light, amen, is the shine that all may seek it. And your life, amen, has been illuminated by God. In this season, we want to be so very careful to stay away from Sorrent, amen. We want to be so very careful to stay away from the vineyards of Timna, amen. And we want to stay, amen, in the places that are conducive to worship, the still waters, Amen. Uh, the tabernacle of the Lord in his presence. Let, let me stop. Amen. But God bless you on the day. Heaven smile on you. And we look forward. Amen. To serving the Lord through the holidays, the new year's on the way. Uh, opportunity. Amen. For us to go forth in the Lord and in his power. God bless you and heaven smile on you.